In this study, we sequenced the genomes of people that lived around 3,000 years ago uh, in the Philistine city of Ashkelon. The genetic results that we're announcing today are the result of decades of hard archaeological research. In the 13th and 12th century, empires collapsed. Indeed, much of civilization collapsed. And when people woke up 100 years later, the world was very different. One of the groups that people noticed 100 years later were the Philistines. The Philistines appear in the Hebrew Bible as one of the great enemies of the Israelites. But where did they come from? Um, their DNA revealed their origins in a way that um, couldn't, we, couldn't, we couldn't get to before. We detected a, a substantial proportion of their ancestry uh, was actually derived from a European uh, population. Uh, this means that the ancestors of uh, these Philistines must have traveled uh, across the Mediterranean and reached Ashkelon uh, sometime uh, during the end of the Bronze Age or the beginning of the Iron Age. From the early 20th century, people noted that some of the styles of pottery that were found at some of the Philistine cities, according to the Hebrew Bible, seemed to match styles of pottery that came from Greece in earlier era. It's not just the objects of antiquity, but it's the people that we wanted to to get to, to figure out who were these people, where did they come from, what were they like, what was their religion, their history, their culture. So I think what our research here is showing is that we are now able to um, move from prehistoric times into historical times and see if some of the historical events that have been described in early historical texts or even religious texts like the Bible, if indeed we find also evidence uh, based on uh, genetic research, if some of those um, shifts or changes or migrations of people indeed occur. What we also find, which is quite interesting, is that at a later stage, in the later Iron Age, this genetic signature seems to disappear again. In the later Iron Age, the people that lived there, which is in about 800 BC, they look genetically again like the people that lived there in the Bronx Age before. So we see this incursion of people coming with the time of the Phyllis times, but then this genetic signature seems to disappear again. The findings of this study are a good example of how DNA can be a powerful tool uh, to record history and answer historical questions. Uh, on the other hand, it reminds us that uh, culture or ethnicity uh, don't necessarily equal uh, the genetic makeup of the same groups.